L4 Sulky of America. And So What is where we all come together, talk about sewing, what we're working on, bounce ideas off of each other. And today I'm here to bring you a couple of cute projects. Um, I hope you all had a great Memorial Day weekend. We're back. It's Tuesday, you know. Re-entry is difficult, but we're going to get back into the sewing room with some inspiration. Did you also know that Sunday was National Hamburger Day? Who knew? Uh, you probably celebrated Memorial Day weekend with some hamburgers or veggie burgers, whatever floats your boat. Um, so you were celebrating and you didn't even know it. So I've got some hamburger themed projects for us today, but of course you could use any embroidery designs or even substitute with quilting or free motion stitching um, for one of the projects, we'll say at least. But before we get into our hamburger fun, I want to make sure everybody is aware of our boba tea in the hoop zipper pouch free webcast with Parker on the porch. We will be coming to you live at 2 p.m. Eastern time over on our education platform, which is sewingonline.sulky.com. And all you have to do is register and you'll get a reminder when we're about to go live. And Jen Chesnick of Parker on the Porch is going to join us and take us through this adorable boba tea themed zipper pouch that is all done in the hoop of your embroidery machine. She's going to give us all the tips and tricks that we need to work with Sulky Felty and all the great zippers and threads and everything that's included in our great boba tea kit. You can grab that at sulky.com and still get it in advance of our webcast because it's happening June 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So we're just a couple of weeks away and I just want to make sure that everybody who wants to get a kit can get a kit because at the crazy price that it's at right now, they are flying off the shelves. And I just want to make sure that if you do want a kit, you grab it up while it's on sale and while it is in stock. All right. So with your Boba Tea kit, you will get all the design files needed to create the zipper pouch in the hoop. And it comes in multiple sizes. So if you do have hoop limitations, you can make a smaller zipper pouch in the hoop. Um, and if you want to make the largest size, you can use your biggest hoop and make a large size zipper pouch. These make great gifts for summer birthdays, holidays, just for a little one in your life. I know my littles happen to love boba tea. They are obsessed. Um, they really just like the popping boba tapioca pearls that are inside. They're just fun, you know? So anyways, uh, you will get all the files for that. As I mentioned, it comes in multiple sizes. And Parker on the Porch is throwing in a bonus design, which is for this really cute boba tea stuffy. So you can create a stuffy out of plush fabric, stuff it with some fiber fill, and have a little mini pillow. This also comes in several sizes, um, so you have a lot of options for what to make. And just for registering, you will get a couple of freebie in the hoop designs from Parker on the Porch. There's this really cute mochi design, as well as a card guard. And you can see those fit really nicely on some key rings. You can add it to your zipper pull on your boba tea zipper pouch um, or just gift those away. If you have a summer birthday party coming up for some littles or some friends are getting together for um, a cute brunch or something, you can gift them um, and, of course, make them for your own self. The little card guard. Sorry, I dropped one of our projects that I'm going to show today. The card guard fits your ID, a gift card, some cash, stuff like that. And you can add it to a little key ring with your little mochi. And the mochis and the in the hoop zipper pouch are made with Sulky Felty. So if you're not familiar with Sulky Felty, it is kind of like a wool felt in hand, in feel. But 
it's 100% polyester, so you can wash it, iron it. It's um, really nice and soft and flexible, unlike, you know, stiff craft felt. So it's really great for in-the-hoop charms, um, in-the-hoop pouches, appliques. I have used it for so many things, as you all know, um, because I'm sure you see me working with it all the time. At any rate, just for registering for the free webcast, you will get these freebie files and you can try out some designs from Parker on the Porch absolutely for free. Then you can join us to make this adorable in the hoop zipper pouch on June 13th. So, you know, I got to know Jen from Parker on the Porch over the course of a few months while we're working on this webcast. And she's the cutest thing. Love working with her. Her designs have stitched out absolutely 100% perfect for me, and it's become one of my go-to embroidery design sites. Um, because of how well everything is digitized, how thoughtfully it is all put together for In The Hoop projects specifically, and just how incredibly adorable her design style is. And it's funny, you know, I was thinking about National Hamburger Day and I happened to be on her site because we were talking about something for the webcast and I stumbled upon these super duper cute cheeseburger in the hoop designs. I know. So she has a number of designs like these on her website and they're little paper clips they're um, freestanding little guys, and you can use them, you know, in your planner or for kids' schoolwork, or they would make really great back-to-school gifts for teachers. There's hamburgers, there's fruit, there's um, all kinds of motifs um, for these little guys, and I link directly to this design set um, in the description of today's post. It's within the blog post where I explain how to turn this design into a little key ring. So instead of creating this for a paper clip or a, you know, organizer clip, I am gonna add a little fabric loop and a little swivel clip D-ring combo and turn it into a cute little keychain or just charm for your backpack or bag. So it's really simple to do. We just need to modify Jen's design a little bit so that we can add this little piece right here um, without cutting through it, of course, and then adding the hardware of our choice. So again, all the instructions to make this are on the Sulky blog. I link to it in the description of today's post. If you're not seeing that, you need to click on that little see more button. The whole description will pop out you'll find links for everything I'm going to talk about, including the full tutorial for kind of altering the Parker on the porch design to make it into a key ring. So that's what we're going to start talking about today. And be sure to put your comments, questions, everything in the live chat or the comments below this screen. And as long as you are engaging with the post, asking questions, giving me those great emojis, you will be automatically eligible to win today's little gifty from Sulky of America, which is a pack of our brand new clear embroidery tape. And I'm going to show you how I use that in this project specifically as we move forward. So make sure to be engaging with the post. Make sure you've liked our page on Facebook if you're watching from Facebook. If you're watching from YouTube, make sure to subscribe to our channel. That's really the only way I can contact you if you are the winner of today's door prize. All right, so with the cheeseburger charm, I'm going to use Sulky Poly Deco thread. You could also use Sulky Rayon thread if rayon is more your sort of go to for machine embroidery thread. But for this, I'm going to use the Poly Deco, and it's really just a matter of personal preference um, because it's not like you know, you're going to be washing this with bleach or, you know, out in the sun with it. And, you know, your rayon thread could be compromised because of all of that. 
Um, it's just a matter of personal preference. But our Poly Deco thread is just as shiny and beautiful and colorful as the rayon thread. And they are the same weight of thread. They're just made of different things. So matter of personal preference, you can go with rayon or Poly Deco. But I wanted to mention that I found all the colors for my cheeseburger charm in the starter set of Poly Deco thread, which comes in a slimline storage box. Is everyone familiar with our slimline storage boxes? They come in small and large sizes, meaning they either hold the small snap spools of thread, which are the 250 yard spools of thread, or they come in the larger size, which just means the little tines that hold the spools are farther apart and have more room to accommodate our king size spools of thread. So make sure that you purchase the right slimline container for the threads that you use most often. If you're buying the container separately because you need to get organized, um, I need a few more slimlines. I have about 12 in my studio and I have more thread and I need more places for it. But that's a story for another day. Anyways, the slimline storage boxes are really cool because first off, you can see right through them. You can also hang them from some pegboards or hooks in your sewing room and you can open them up and hang them so that the covered part is facing you and the open part is facing your wall. So it makes it a little more sort of easier to see all of the colors that you have, but they're also protected from dirt, dust, debris, what have you in your sewing room. Um, so that's a great way to store them. Or of course you could stack them. I have so many, I have resorted to stacking them, but I like that I can still see right through them. So I can just grab the one that I need and, you know, organize them by color. Incidentally, great job for the little ones to organize your thread by color. Um, mine happen to love doing that, but they might be rare birds. I don't know. <laughs> At any rate, I found all the colors that I needed in this starter slimline, so that was super convenient. You also, of course, need some stabilizer, and I'm gonna use Sulky Stiffy for this. It's a tearaway stabilizer that's going to allow me to tear away all the stabilizer edges from the outer perimeter stitching line and you won't be able to see any stabilizer along your seam allowance edge because you're tearing it cleanly away. There is stabilizer inside of here though, which just keeps shape it and um, you know give it structure over time. Um, it's not necessary to have that stabilizer still in there, but it's kind of acting like another layer of interfacing, but it is still rather pliable. Even though it's, it's called stiffy, um, it still has a little bit of movement to it um, and it doesn't have sort of that telltale sort of crinkle, um, if you will. So at any rate, I chose stiffy over tear easy because there is such dense stitching in these fill stitches that make up the burger patty, the lettuce, and we need some good stability for that. You could probably get away with using Tear Easy, but we are going to layer faux leather, or you could use cork fabric, or you could use sulky felty as well. Since we are layering those fabrics around the stabilizer, sandwiching the stabilizer to create this key ring, um, the Tear Easy, I just thought, was not going to be supportive enough for the bulk of the fabric. So that's why I went up to the Sulky Stiffy, um, which is essentially like two or maybe even three layers of the Tear Easy. Also, we're gonna need some KK2000, which is our trusty temporary spray adhesive. Um, this is what we're going to use to help secure our faux leather in the hoop because we are only gonna hoop our stabilizer and we're gonna add layers of our fabric and hardware and all of that as we move the design forward. So the KK2000 is handy for that, but also the clear embroidery tape, brand new from Sulky. It's been out for a couple of weeks now. This is a transparent embroidery tape so you can see through it 
and it tears really cleanly along the edge. It's also extremely uh, strong. So it has no problem holding fabrics on the underside of your hoop while the machine is moving around. It secures those fabrics um, nice and with a strong hold. If you're used to using paper tape or masking tape even, or people use painter's tape to secure fabrics like that because the KK2000 is not gonna be enough to hold that fabric in place with the movement of the hoop, okay? So you do need some kind of tape. And this clear tape is really the answer because of its strength, but also because if you happen to get it in an area that, that you stitch over even multiple times, you can cleanly tear it away along the stitching edge. See how nice and clean that tears away? You can even reuse it as well and create smaller little strips of it. I mean, I know all tape, you're able to, you know, tear it rather cleanly, but sometimes when you go to tear away a paper tape from a seam line, it can pop those stitches a little bit, making them not as strong as they once were when you constructed the item. So to be able to tear it away this cleanly and this easily is really important and a great feature of this tape. So I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Give me a thumbs up if you've already purchased this tape and you're using it. We would love to hear your thoughts because just with all Sulky products, we really, really strive to bring you the best quality um, uh, products out there. So we would love your feedback. And this is today's door prize for one lucky person who is watching right now, commenting, uh, giving me those emojis, engaging with me here today. Um, as long as you're doing that, you'll be eligible to win a pack of the Sulky Clear Embroidery Tape. Um, so make sure you are commenting. Hello. <laughs> All of a sudden I got a bunch of comments. All right, so let's get to the charm. So first you're going to load the cheeseburger into your embroidery machine. And you'll see that uh, you can use your smallest hoop for this. It's very small. So no problem on hoop limitations unless you want to make a bunch of these all at once. Just give yourself enough room so you can build your keyring portion um, onto the charm since it is not part of this design and we are adding that in our own selves. Then we are going to hoop our stiffy stabilizer. And I'm using a magnetic hoop here, but if you don't have a magnetic hoop, you can use a standard hoop. Um, I am just really partial to these magnetic hoops now that I've used them for quite a while. Um, so you'll see a lot of, almost all of my tutorials are featuring magnetic hoops because I'm, I'm addicted and I need a support group. That's also why we're all here together, isn't it? <laughs> it's our therapy, right? All right, so we're gonna hoop our stiffy stabilizer in a magnetic hoop or a standard one. If you are interested in a magnetic hoop, we do have them at sulky.com in various sizes. So you'll just uh, punch in your, or select rather, your machine brand, make and model, and it will tell you the available hoops for your machine. They communicate with your machine just like your standard hoops. So if you get a 200 by 200 hoop, that's what you would se select on your machine screen and your machine will know that that hoop is in fact in your uh, module. It's pretty great. All right, so we are first going to uh, perform the first color stop of the design, which is going to be a placement stitch so that we know where to place our first fabric, which is um, our faux leather. I happen to have a scrap of this light brown faux leather, but it would also look really cute in a more yellowish faux leather or a cork fabric, which is kind of inherently yellow, unless of course it's a um, colored cork fabric. Um, some color, you know, sort of like this is a little bit more bun-esque, but I still like mine. My bun is just toasted, I guess. 
and that's fine, right? So after you do your placement stitch, we're gonna put a little bit of KK2000 on the back side of our faux leather or cork or felt tee you could even use as well. And you could see my placement stitch there. Now you're just going to put your uh, fabric in place, making sure that it covers all of those placement stitches. And be conservative with this. I mean, you want a border around the stitches, but I'm using scraps here and I needed to make sure that I had enough for the backing of my cheeseburger charm as well as my little hanging loop. I needed a little rectangle as well. And I was working with a pretty small scrap. Um, so you wanna be careful with how you place it, but still give yourself a good enough border so that when you trim away um, your charm at the end, that you have you know enough fabric extending beyond those perimeter stitches. I will come clean and say that mine is really close. I would have liked a little bit more of a border, um, but I was working with um, a very small scrap. So, you know, in hindsight and doing this again um, with felty or another fabric, I would have given myself um, more of a border around those perimeter stitches. But anyways, let's move forward and put our faux leather in place. So now we just want to trim around those placement stitches along the upper edge of our bun. We don't need to trim anything else yet because we're going to trim the whole thing as one. It's much easier to trim the front and back at the same time um, so that your edge is nice and clean and even. All right, so we just want to trim along this upper edge so that um, so that it's nice and clean. Obviously, we won't be able to trim that after we have our loop in place, right? I mean, you could go in there, but it would be really hard to match that line up with the one along the back side. Everybody with me? All right, so we're gonna trim it up a little bit only along that upper curved edge where we are going to add our hanging loop. Speaking of hanging loop, we're gonna cut a rectangle of that same fabric, whether we're using felty or uh, the faux leather or the cork, something that's a no fray fabric, right? So we don't have to finish the edges. And we're gonna wrap it around a D-ring swivel clip. These are readily available um, in the purse hardware section of your fabric store. You can find them at sallytomato.com. I had some leftover ones from a key ring project or a um, key fob project. Uh, so I used those. They come in various sizes. So depending on the size you have, if you happen to have one on hand, just measure the width of that and make sure that your rectangle fits the width. Maybe you have a D-ring that's only a half inch wide. That's still gonna work for this, right? You just need a skinnier uh, little rectangle for your loop. So give that a little measure, make sure that your rectangle will fit, wrap it around, and then you can secure the ends with a little wonder clip or just your hands for the moment. And we're going to remove the hoop from the machine and flip it over. So this gave me a little bit of anxiety <laughs> because we're putting the hardware on the wrong side of the hoop because we already have our design and our fabric and everything stitched on the right side. So that means that the hardware is going to be against our machine bed for the final stitching process. And we don't want it to scratch up our beautiful sewing machine, right? So enter sulky clear embroidery tape. You're gonna cover that whole D-ring swivel clip with the tape. And that's gonna give you this barrier between the hardware and your machine bed so that it doesn't scratch it up during the stitch out. And it's also going to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, all right? So we're gonna tape our hardware and then we're going to add our 
back fabric piece as well. So see how I'm using like some scraps here? I put it over the back, tape it a bunch, make sure the, all the hardware has tape over the whole thing, and then we're gonna put our hoop back onto the machine. And don't worry too much that um, there isn't gonna be enough movement of your hoop during the stitch out. We're gonna slow the machine speed almost all the way down to nothing. So it goes nice and slow, so nothing can catch or go too fast and get crazy on us. All right? So now you're gonna return your hoop back to the machine, and you are going to do another sort of placement stitch, or really it's your final straight stitch around your little cheeseburger charm. That is going to secure your backing fabric as well as your little keyring charm thing. <laughs> keyring charm thing. Your uh, D-ring swivel clip, okay? So you'll do that final outline stitch, and then essentially your design is complete. We're gonna come in and clip any jump threads using our curved tip squeezers. Here's what the back looks like. Start removing your tape. There we go, now all the tape has been removed. And now we are going to trim along that upper curve on the back side. And you can just trim across a little bit, trim close to the edge using the same sort of seam allowance that you did on the front, but only trim along that upper edge curve because we wanna trim everything else together. So trim along that upper edge, and then we're going to remove our stiffy stabilizer. And as I mentioned, it's a tearaway stabilizer. So it's gonna tear cleanly away along that outer stitching line and come out of our seam allowance. So even though it's still inside of those layers, that doesn't matter to us. What matters is that it's not showing inside of that cute little seam allowance. So now remove all the stabilizer bits and we're gonna clean up the edges and trim the rest of the cheeseburger charm so that all of our edges are nice and even. I trimmed my um, upper charm a little bit too much. So do as I say and not as I do or not as I did um, and only trim along that upper curved edge so that you can get more of a border around your little cheeseburger charm. All right, and then you want really sharp scissors for this. Um, where did mine go? Very, very sharp scissors. I love my little Olfa um, task scissors, I think they're called. They have held up over years and years and they just cut like butter, especially through all of these layers of this faux leather, um, you get a really nice, accurate cut. Um, just make sure that you're maintaining whatever seam allowance uh, you wanna have for your charm. Like I said, mine was a little too close for comfort. I would have gone at least an eighth of an inch beyond those stitches um, in hindsight. Um, but again, I, I used such a small scrap and I didn't have any left over to make another charm that was this toasty bread color. Um, and that's the one I wanted to show you all today. And then your little charm is complete. These make super cute gifts, especially over the summer when everybody is grilling and barbecuing um, and just simple, cute any time of year. So you can kind of browse all of these cute little charms at Parker on the porch. A lot of them are similar to this. I think there's a popsicle, like I mentioned, there's some fruit. They're just so, so cute. Um, this would make a really great Father's Day gift as well. If you have um, you know, a dad in your life that loves burgers, loves to grill, that kind of thing, um, it would be really cute uh, to uh, give to a dad in your life. All right, so that is hamburger project number one. 
And now I'm going to go to a throwback project. I actually presented this to all of you last year around this time. Um, and I thought it was worth a revisit since it's another cheeseburger. And this tutorial is really helpful for just embroidering on napkins in general. Um, the napkins I embroidered were uh, purchase napkins that I just found at, you know, Target, I believe. Um, that's not a picture of napkins. Where are they? Oh, here we go. Um, and they come in a two pack, super affordable. Um, you can grab them at a big box store or you can uh, search for embroidery blanks. There's a lot of just plain napkins, but it's super easy to create your own napkins, just even from quilting cotton fabric. You simply cut a square a little bit larger than the size napkin that you want and then hem the edges and you're good to go. You've got your own napkin. I'm sure we have enough scrap fabrics in our lives or, you know, fabric stashes that we can make our own napkins. But if you want them all to match or you want them all to be white or black or a specific color to suit your design, you can find these super easy, relatively inexpensive. Um, and, you know, they're a little bit thicker than, let's say, your quilting cotton would be. So the choice is yours for that. At any rate, I would recommend washing them before you do any embroidery because, you know, depending on the fabric content, they could have a little bit of shrinkage and you want to see how it performs, right? So machine wash it, dry it, give it a good press, and then you're ready to start your embroidery. So whether or not you want to do a uh, cheeseburger themed napkin is up to you. Um, but choose a size that's going to fit along one of your napkin points. I feel like uh, that's sort of the easiest way to fold a napkin for like an embroidery presentation uh, for your decor is to have it along one of the napkin points. But you could certainly do a border design along the lower edge of a napkin. That looks really pretty when you like sort of bunch it up with a napkin ring or roll it up, you know, next to your place setting, what have you. Um, but for this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to place it along the corner of your napkin when you obviously cannot hoop a pre-made hemmed uh, embroidery blank or napkin such as this, a purchased napkin. So if cheeseburgers aren't your thing, you can choose a design that's relatively small that's going to fit along your napkin corner. And you know, napkins come in all different sizes. So just kind of open up your napkin, measure along the corner, and you can decide how big or how small you want your little motif to be. Uh, this is also a really great tutorial for like a set of monogrammed napkins as well. Same techniques apply. You're just swapping out the design for something that floats your boat. So for the napkins, along with the napkins, we're going to work with Sulky Sticky Plus Stabilizer. This is also a tearaway stabilizer, but it is adhesive backed. And uh, it has a paper backing to it that's covering up the adhesive. It's going to allow us to hoop the napkin, even though that part, the pointy part of the napkin, isn't going to fit in the hoop. So we are going to stick our napkin to the stabilizer, and the stabilizer is going to be the only thing we hoop. So this is what I refer to as hoopless embroidery. Even though we're using a hoop, we're not using our hoop with our fabric. So that's why I call it hoopless embroidery. Along with the Sticky Plus, we of course also need our Sticky Plus slitting pen. Who out there has a slitting pen already? This is one of my favorite tools at sulky.com. I'm gonna just give it a round of applause because I can. not This is a game changer in the world of hoopless embroidery. So what this pen does, it's actually just a pointy tip. Where is my slitting pen? So it's not a pen at all. It is a tool with this pointy, pointy tip on it. And you use this tip to slice through the paper backing 
of our adhesive-backed stabilizers without slicing through the stabilizer itself. I know. So the point is sharp enough to slice through that paper backing, but not sharp enough to slice through the stabilizer underneath it. So once we have our stabilizer in the hoop with the paper side facing up, we're going to score the paper, remove it, and now we have a sticky surface to put our napkin in the hoop without actually hooping it. All right. I know you have all heard my slitting pen spiel a thousand times over, but for all of you newbies to so what, I have to uh, tell you all about my favorite findings because they just make your life so much easier. If you've ever done hoopless embroidery and you've used a pin or even um, the dullest scissors that you have to try and slice through that paper backing, I would say at least 50% of the time you're going to slice through the stabilizer as well and have to patch it up or throw it away and start over again and it's so irritating. So this slitting pen really is the answer to saving you a lot of time and frustration uh, during this process. So here is our sticky plus in the hoop. You can use a magnetic hoop or a standard embroidery hoop like I'm showing here, but just make sure that your paper side is facing up. So you'll be seeing the sulky sticky plus uh, writing, as well as these grid lines, which are also helpful in embroidery design placement. Oh, that's our napkins. All right, so here's our sticky plus, and I'm showing you that slitting pen as well. But before we slice into that stabilizer, we're going to load the design into the machine and we're going to select the function that allows us to add a basting box around the design. Do you see how I have the option of basting around the design or basting around the hoop? Basting around the hoop is going to give us a line that's just inside of our inner hoop ring. When we baste around the design, it's going to give us a line just beyond the perimeter of the design. So if you want to use this as a placement tool, I suggest just basting around the design because that's going to give us the exact design size so we can put our napkin onto the stabilizer and know exactly where the design is going to land. So we're going to baste around the design and add that to our stitch sequence. And we are going to sew directly through the paper and everything. This picture is a little bit misleading because it's showing our paper already removed, but we are not going to remove it yet. We are going to do the first color stop, which is now going to be that basting box. Then we are either going to remove the hoop from the machine or we are going to tell the machine to go to trim position, which is going to move it towards us and away from the needle so that we can do some trimming, which is really going to be removing that paper backing. So along the stitches, the design perimeter stitches, we're going to take that slitting pen and run it along the basting box. If we happen to slice through a little bit of the stitching, no problem, we don't really need it. You actually could do your design basting stitch without any thread in the needle at all and just allow the needle to perforate that paper a little bit. Then we come in with our slitting pen and run it along those perforations so that we can remove the paper and we have a box that is exactly the size of our embroidery design. So now that we have our box and our sticky stabilizer is showing, we are going to place our napkin so that we know exactly where the design's going to be. And the great thing about using white napkins or a light colored napkin is if you do use a dark colored thread for your basting box, 
you can see right through it and you know exactly where that design is going to sew out. So this is really helpful when you are placing a design on somewhere like a corner point where it's really imperative that you get that design perfectly placed. So this is just, like I said, great for a cheeseburger design, great for a monogram design, whatever you wanna put on your napkins, this is a foolproof way of perfect placement without having to mark up your napkin with a removable marker or chalk um, or doing a bunch of other fiddly things with placement. This basting box is super, super helpful. So now our napkin is in place. It is stuck to the stabilizer, only you know where we've removed that paper backing. And all we have to do now is begin the design and work our way through it. So make sure that with every thread change, you are clipping your jump threads on the right side of the napkin as well as the wrong side of the napkin. And this might seem a little bit tedious for you. It's definitely going to take a little bit longer to do it this way. But after every thread change, take the hoop off of the machine, turn it over, and clip the jump threads on the wrong side as well as the right side. And you'll want to use some curved tip squeezers. If you don't have these already, they're so great for jump threads, uh, trimming jump threads, because see how curved that tip is. You can come in there while your item is on the hoop and simply clip those jump threads without running the risk of poking through your fabric or snipping other threads in the design. So that's why these were created really is for these jump thread trim stitches. So right and wrong side, we're gonna do that all the way through the design. Now for my napkins, I used white bobbin thread to match my white napkins but you are going to see the wrong side of your design. So if you want the wrong side to look just as pretty as the right side, you can also swap out your bobbin thread and match it to your top thread. For this design, I would recommend using poly deco thread on the top in the needle and poly light thread in the bobbin. You want a lighter weight bobbin thread generally in most cases because that is how you're gonna get the most balanced stitch. That means that some of your top thread is visible on the wrong side of your project, just a little bit. It's pulling it to the wrong side so that you don't see any bobbin thread on the right side, okay? So to get that balanced stitch, and your machine already adjusts for that when you go into embroidery mode, but to get that balance stitch, you really need a lighter weight thread in the bobbin. Now, of course, in a pinch or in certain circumstances, I will use the same thread weight on the top that I use in the bobbin. And sometimes I will get some bobbin thread showing on the right side because of that um, change that I'm doing. But since it's the same color, it's less noticeable. Okay, it's not the same quality stitch out, but it works and it would be okay here as well. So it really depends on how persnickety you wanna get with your design and the finished look of it. But our poly light threads come in the same colors as the poly deco threads. So if you're purchasing a poly deco slimline, let's say that I showed you earlier with lots of different colors in a collection, you can purchase those same colors in the poly light so that you basically have a bobbin box and a top thread box. And you can match up your colors exactly, but you'll have a 40 weight thread on top and a 60 weight thread in the bobbin. And when we are using 40 weight thread in the top, we need an 8012, or you can also go up to a 9014 embroidery needle. I have also had success with a 7511 embroidery needle with the 40 weight poly deco on the top and the 60 weight poly light in the bobbin. 
So lots of options uh, for needles there as well. But for a napkin project like this with a pretty stable fabric, you can go with an embroidery type needle. All right, so here is our little cheeseburger coming together. We've got a couple of jump threads left to do. And there he is, all finished. So now we need to remove the napkin from the stabilizer and it tears away so nice and cleanly from those edges. So simply lift on your uh, napkin and you can pull it up or conversely, you can take the whole thing out of the hoop and then lift your stabilizer to tear it away. And that's another reason why I like to only remove the paper backing of the stabilizer um, right around my design. Because if I had removed that paper backing inside of the entire hoop, I would have to tear away a lot more sticky stabilizer from the back of my napkin. Um, so it's just easier to work with smaller increments and then you might be able to use other pieces of your sticky stabilizer for other uses as well. I never throw away my stabilizer scraps. You just never know when you can use one. All right, so you're gonna get in there with some tweezers or just your fingernails, get all the little bits of tear away, sticky plus tear away stabilizer out of the little nooks and crannies of your design. And here's the back of the design. You can see I used that white bobbin thread to match my napkin. I have a little, little bits here and there of stabilizer I still need to remove. But he's pretty much finished and ready for the barbecue. So this would also make a really cute Father's Day brunch little decor idea. You could theme it up all cheeseburgery and then, you know, gift dad a cute little key ring um, that he can, you know, tote around and know that his loved ones gifted to him, right? So I think that's a pretty cute project and really easy to make multiples of these designs because the stitch out comes together so quickly. And if you're interested in that cheeseburger design or the cheeseburger charm that I modified, you can head on over to the Sulky blog and get all the information for both of those projects. And um, I hope you enjoy. Just remember that that design from Parker on the Porch is not digitized or, you know, made to be a key ring. So you do need those instructions on the Sulky blog if you want to modify it that way. Or you can create it as intended and make it into a little, um, you know, journal clip or uh, organizer clip as well. So super cute ideas. And I hope it gave you some inspiration as we head more into grilling season, really. I mean, Memorial Day kind of kicks that off with everybody getting outside and getting after the grill. And I hope you have great weather and you can continue to dine al fresco and make lots of cheeseburgers, veggie burgers, hot dogs, all those kinds of things. Um, and, you know, make them with stitches as well. So thanks again for joining me today, everybody. Be sure... Um, and check out, make sure that you're registered for the Boba Tea in the Hoop Zipper Pouch webcast. It's in a couple of weeks, so grab up your kit while it's on sale. Make sure that we have those in stock for you so that you can create all kinds of cute Boba Tea zipper pouches. Um, and then try your hand at your free mochi and uh, card guard designs. And we'll be talking a lot more about those and also giving you the tutorial for them during the webcast as well. So you'll get some pointers for creating those um, from the digitizer and designer herself. So I can't wait for it. I'm excited. Can you tell? All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you next week on another So What?